Question number three. A concert venue uses a program to calculate admission prices and store information about ticket sale. The number of arrays are used to store the data. The computer is switched off overnight and data has to be input again at the start of each day before any tickets can be sold. This process is very time -free. Explain how the program could use text file to speed up the process. Every day, whatever the data that will be stored in array will be dumped to the file and uh, next day, when computer starts, all the records are read back from the file to the array so that only new records could be added to it. You don't have to actually re-enter all previous records before entering any new records every day. There is sort of insanity because with the passage of time, if the records grow and grow, 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 grow in hundred, how would someone be entering hundreds of records every day in the morning? Okay, so 3A is explain how the program could use text files to speed up the process. How many marks are there? Just two. Data uh, in arrays can be written to no, store, can be stored in text files at the end of the day data in text files can be read back into arrays before starting the day, all right? Okay, so there is no need to re-enter data we enter previous data every day. All right, you don't need to re enter previous data every day. State the characteristics of text file that allows them to be used as explained in uh, part A. These are uh, non volatile. Okay, the array lives in RAM and RAM is volatile. Okay. The data in text files retains as files stay stored when power is switched off over secondary storage. Which is which is non-volatile. This is the characteristic. Information about ticket sales will be stored as a booking. The booking requires the following data. Name of person booking, number of people in the group, name of person booking, all right? Number of people in the group, for example, family ticket or school or a school party, and event type suggest how data relating to each booking may be stored in the text file. Okay.
So what we can do, we have got three different variables for every record. We can save them in one single line, but we have to first use casting means to convert that data to string. Or we can uh, turn the data into a string, we cast it to a string and then we put special character like asterisks in between and make a single record and save it as a single line of code. So you can opt for anything. Okay. So first cast data to a string. Merge all data items together into a single string with a special character like Sterisk in between. In between. Then it is saved to. the text file, it is saved to the text file as a single record line. Okay, now, who says what? Sir, separate lines make you nahi, bilkul lik sakte you have this um, alternative option. I just went by my instinct. You may write that convert the data, cast data to a string and rec uh, record every single item in the same, uh, in the different line. Uh, suggest how data relating to each booking may be stored in a text file. So you can just write that every single data item can be written as in a separate line. So there will be three lines of uh, data per record in the file. So that doesn't matter. Okay, a procedure preview will uh, take the name of the text file as parameter, okay. Um, output the warning message if the file is empty, okay. Otherwise output the first five lines from the file or as many lines as there are in the file if there's the file number is okay. So we are making a procedure which is called preview. And then uh, we will actually uh, receiving a parameter with the file name, whatever the file name, we will open that file. Okay, we will open that file and there are two possibilities. Either the file is empty or it has got records. If it has got records, there are two possibilities. Either the number of lines in the file is greater than five. In that case, we will only be outputting five lines. If the, the number of lines in the file is less than five, we will only be outputting any number of files which are less than five. Okay, so we would have two checks to get out of the loop either the file ends or the number of lines that we have read in the file the counter is greater than five okay uh, either it is the less uh, either it is the end of file before five lines or it is the number of lines okay now procedure preview 
uh, it receives the name of the file, file name as a string. Since it is procedure, it is not returning any. So we have to have the number of lines counter uh, and we have to have a string uh, variable that will retrieve the data from the file so that we could output on the screen. So we need, apparently we need two identifiers. Declare line number as integer. Declare record line as a string. Then we open the file for input, for read. Open file, file name. And remember this time, this file name is not the name of the file. This is actually an identifier which is holding the file name. That's why we are not going to put it in double quotation. Okay, we put double quotation when we write the name of the file. Since the name of the file is being received in this one particular uh, parameter. So whatever the name of the file that will be open for read. All right. So first we have to check if the file is empty. So we will be like if end of file file name then we can write directly then since end of file function returns true or false, or we can have it be checked. If end of file, file name is true, then output, what did they say? Output what? Otherwise output, output warning message. Okay, output warning. file is empty. All right, else uh, we need to initialize this to zero and this to null. So since there are a number of lines, so we first increase line number, line number is equal to line number plus one, okay? No, first we have to actually start the loop while not end of file, file name, and line number is equal to five. Since we are starting from zero, so we will be ending at five. All right. Then we increase the line number. Line number is equal to line number plus one. So now we are going to retrieve the first record read file file name into record line. All right, and then we output this line to the screen output record line. All right, and then and why? All right, so what will happen? Let's say we have got more than five lines. So if line number will become one, the line will be fetched, output, line number become two, line number will be fetched, output, line number three, uh, output, fetched, output, line number four, fetched output line number five, fetched output. And when it goes back, it sees that in line, line number is uh, five. If an, it is less than five, it's not. 
equal to five, this should be less than five. So if it is equal to five, then it will get out. Secondly, if it is uh, end of file, which is true, then in that case, it will get out as well. So that's it. And if close file, close file is necessary. Close file, file name, and that's about it and procedure. Okay, so this is the code. Let's move on. Study the following sort of code. Line numbers are for reference only. Okay, so this is a function that converts something. Name is string, returns a string. Okay, so it converts the name to what I have got no idea. Let's see, Boolean flag is Boolean index, this character, new name. Okay, so something is happening that every character is being read and uh, every character is being read and it is going through the length of the string flag is equal to true index is equal to one new name is null while index is less than or equal to okay if this, uh, this character is picked up if the flag is true then a uh, new name is equal to new name and upper case this character okay if this character is not equal to spell character then flag is equal to false okay all right, what it is doing, I believe that it is actually removing spaces from the string. Else name is equal to name plus character. If this character is equal to space character, then flag is equal to true. And if index, okay. So what basically is happening? So it is receiving any string. And what it is doing, it is uh, creating another string out of it. Uh, Arsh, whenever, whenever we use while, we use and because either of them when become false, we have to get out of the loop. But if we are going to use the same condition with uh, repeat until in that case, we will use or. Okay, you need to practice that. Understood? Okay. Now in this particular algorithm, what is happening? Uh, so it is taking any string, taking one, character at a time and creating another string. So it is actually uh, converting lowercase to upper case and uh, excluding any of the spaces. Okay, this is what it is done. All right, so we have to actually name flag index new name this character. And this character, this particular character is being used as space character. So convert Okay, name, flag, index, new name, this character. Name, flag, index, new name, this character. New name, this character. Okay. Now, Name, they said, uh, this is V in V a cup, in a cup. Okay, all right. In a cup. Okay, so this particular character, this V sort character, reverse delta character is basically space. All right, so let's move it a bit out. Okay, so we'll start from this. The name that we have received is this. So flag is true. Flag is true, index is one. New name is null. And this character, we have got no idea what happened to it. All right, then uh, uh, while index is less than this, first we have to take this character. This character will be this. If flag is equal to true, yes, it is true. 
then new name is equal to new name plus space okay uh then flag is equal to space okay new name else if this character is equal to space yes then flag is equal to true so flag remains true here And then index is equal to index plus one. Okay, now we have to pick the next character, which is basically I. So this will become space I. Okay, then it is three. Um, I've picked N, so this has become. this okay then it is four this is another uh, delta space and then it is five this character is a um, let's become this in in a five but flag becomes false here and then we have six we have another space uh, in that case in a space then we have seven and another space, another space, mm -hmm. delta in a cap, cap. Then we have seven. Then we have eight. So you people complete it. It is hard to complete this way. So uh, ultimately, what will happen? You would have a new string that you will return. Okay, you solve it yourself. It is basically five marks question. Uh, B. The pseudocode for convert contains a conditional loop. State a more appropriate loop structure. Since it is counting characters and it is known, I believe that this should be, instead of this while thing, this should be, uh, they used uh, while here. So this should be for count based loop. All right, loop structure should be count based. All right, so this should be count. Count base is also called count controlled. Count control loop. Justification the number of loops is known. That is the thing. How it is known? Because the loop runs as many numbers of the characters in the parameter the string, which was a string. Two changes need to be made to the algorithm. Number one, convert, what happened? Hold on. Two changes need to be made to the algorithm. Number one, convert the lowercase, any character that is not first character after a space. Replace multiple spaces with a single space. 
change one may be implemented by modifying one line of the code convert to lowercase any character that is not the first character after a space all right uh, the, it is not the first character after the space is part of this deal so over here when we are picking up a character we are going to use l case over here what we are going to use we are going to put this thing into l case all right and for the rest of the thing if it is not the character after one, one space is being taken care by the program already okay so the modified line would be line number 24 this character is equal to l case which converts an upper case to the lower case mid of name name comma index comma one all right now change two may be implemented by moving one line of the pseudo code write the number for this change to replace multiple spaces with a single space okay uh one line number needs to be moved. So let's see which one is required to be moved. All right, we need to move this line inside the check. If this character is not equal to space bar, then flag is equal to false. Okay, so line number 26 must be moved inside condition, if then. You get it? So this line needs to be moved inside. Okay, line 26 uh, after 27. So replace multiple spaces with a single space. Okay, so line number 26 after 27 26 26 after 27 question number five a global 2D array result of type integer is used to store a list of exam candidate numbers together with their marks, okay? 2D array result of type integer is used to store the list of exam candidate numbers together with their marks. The array contains 2000 elements, okay? Organized as 1000 rows and two columns, okay? So we would have one 2D array one two three it goes until 1000 and it has got two columns so 1000 into two become 2000 okay organize 1000 rows and two columns column one contains the candidate number and column two uh contains the mark of the corresponding candidate all element contains valid exam results data a procedure sort is needed to sort result into ascending order of mark using an efficient verbal algorithm sorry now i do remember that you asked for this thing day before yesterday so write this procedure sort so we are going to use bubble sort column one contains candidate number a procedure sort is needed to, uh, to sort result into ascending order of the mark okay Column one contains candidate number, column, okay. So column two, this is candidate number. 
candidate number and this is mark so we have to actually sort this on the basis of this column two the mark all right okay now what we will do we will first check if the name is result if result row comma two is greater than result row plus one comma two then we have to now move both okay so we have to have two temporaries temporary one is equal to result row comma one temporary two will be result row comma two then we have to move whatever the data after this row to this row okay so result row comma one is equal to result row plus one comma one and then move the next column result row comma two is equal to result row plus one comma two and then result row plus one comma one is equal to temp one temporary one and result row plus one comma two is equal to temp two and if all right now we have to complete the whole deal we have to complete the whole B. We will first, how many rows do we have? For row is equal to one to one thousand. Okay. For row is equal to one to one thousand. And then this will happen one thousand times. Hmm. Okay, next row. Let's make another loop for diminishing rows. 
okay r from one to one thousand and then this will be one to one thousand and this will be then from one to diminishing rows so the largest value will be set to the end of the array so we don't have to check it again so this must be in reverse order One thousand to one. All right, and then we have to have a flag. Swap is equal to true. That we have to swap is equal to false. I'm trying to make it efficient. And then I made swap is equal to true. Now, if let's say no swap occurs, if Swap that you made false, if it is it's still false, even after checking the whole array, then we get out of the loop. All right, so next diminishing rows so what is basically happening so this row is going from 1000 to 1 which is a step minus 1 it is decreasing we made the swap false and then we go from 1 to 1000 so let's make it 999 because it is checking one further is 999 so when it is 999 it will be checking 1000 over here okay so then we made the swap false and it checks every row with the row further and if it is greater than it then it actually swaps the uh, values okay this goes on if there is any swap that occurs if it is then we mark it with this flag so this is a flag if it does not, there is no need to run any further outer loops. Okay, so that then we get out of this outer loop as well. Okay, so this is now fully efficient bubble sort algorithm. Let's complete it now. What is the name of procedure? Procedure sort declare. Procedure sort declare temp one comma temp two as integers because these are the codes and candidate number and marks. These are integers. Then we declare 